Tonight, the Palm Beach County School District is set to make some changes to its student mental health crisis response policy, also known as the Baker Act policy. These are guidelines for responding when a student presents a danger to themselves or others. Yeah, those changes come following a federal lawsuit that alleged that some of the students with disabilities were handcuffed, put in cop cars, and then later subjected to psychiatric examinations without their parents' consent. CBS 12's Amber Robb joins us over at the district headquarters tonight with the changes that are set to take place. The school board meeting is just getting underway here and on the agenda tonight, talking about revisions to the school district's Baker Act policy. And according to the district, these revisions are not in response or a condition of that judge's ruling. It's just the district working to update policy. Florida's Baker Act law allows authorities to have a psychiatric evaluation done on anyone, including children identified as a threat to themselves or others. But advocacy groups like Disability Rights Florida are concerned that in too many school districts, the number of children being Baker Acted has been on the rise. They're very, very high. Um, tens of thousands of people are, are being Baker Acted each year. The Palm Beach County School District involuntarily committed more than 1,200 students between 2016 and 2020. More than 250 of those were elementary school kids. After a lawsuit was filed by Parents and Disability Rights Florida in 2021, the district claims the number of Baker Acts at schools dropped by more than 80 percent. Clibben says the Baker Act is used too often by Florida school officials to address disciplinary problems. It's really reserved only for those who are in crisis due to mental illness. Following the changes expected in Wednesday's meeting, Baker Acted students will be transported in unmarked vehicles when available. The developmental disabilities list will be expanded, though school resource officers will still have discretion to utilize the Baker Act for students with disabilities on this list. Advocates agree this is a good start, but Disability Rights Florida would like to see more training for staff and to better training to understand the difference between developmental disability and mental illness behaviors, which require evaluation and detention. We did reach out to the school district to talk about this policy before the school board meeting, but the district did not make anyone available to speak with us. Finding out why the principal over at the Martin County School District is under investigation and has been reassigned. It involves a question search of students on the school's grounds. Katie Benty is joining us tonight over in Stewart. She's outside of South Fork High School with the newly released documents and why this case has been handed back to the school board. Katie. Jim, while the incidents that the deputies were investigating here at South Fork High School were questionable, they say they weren't criminal, which is why the Martin County Sheriff's Office had already handed the case back over to the school board to be handled internally. South Fork High School principal Dr. Timothy Adkin and teacher Elliot Jacobs are the focus of a professional standards investigation after allegations surfaced claiming the men searched students looking for nicotine vape pens. So they called them into an office. Again, there was the uh, the principal and the coach and these three individuals and they had them uh, remove their outer garments down to their boxer shorts and conducted a search trying to find those vape pens. Documents released to CBS 12 News details what happened next. One student stated at no point was he asked to remove his underwear and was not physically touched during the incident. Martin County Sheriff's deputies later issued two of the students citations for having vape pens, something that's not allowed in schools. Deputies say Adkin later took it upon himself to file a report to the district. Keep in mind, the juveniles never complained. Their parents never came forward and complained. This was something that he solely came forward and uh, stated on his own. Deputies say how the situation was handled is frowned upon, but concluded in its investigation, nothing illegal happened. What did not take place was there was no videoing, no photographs. There was no touching of any uh, sort. There was no uh, movement of the clothes to show anything that was inappropriate. So there, uh, from the law enforcement standpoint, was nothing criminal that had taken place. The sheriff's office has given the case back to the school board to handle internally. Both faculty members have been reassigned to work at the district headquarters while the investigation continues. I am surprised, actually, because he seems like a pretty upstanding guy, nice guy. He's always treated me fair. We spoke with Martin County Schools spokesperson Jennifer DeShazo. She says they're still trying to gather all the facts 
and they're investigating the incidents thoroughly before the board decides how to move forward. They say they know this is just as important to South Fork families as it is to the board.